Alrighty, if you count December 19th, we are just three days away from the official release of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker by Disney, Lucasfilm, J.J. Abrams, and even creator George Lucas. That is all set and ready to end the Skywalker saga and the sequel trilogy itself. This is Mike Zero. make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future content. Now there's a lot of different emotions, feelings, and thoughts among many Star Wars fans around the world before they go ahead and see this movie based on what they have seen in the trailers and the TV spots and what they have heard throughout all the leaks and the spoilers, you name it. Now, not just that, we do know that Disney and Lucasfilm are also preparing the future of the Star Wars franchise and expanding the Star Wars franchise past Episode 9. Now, based on the leaks, I have expressed my criticism of The Rise of Skywalker based on what we have heard throughout the leaks, which a lot of them are indeed true, which I honestly think are big and terrible mistakes by Disney and Lucasfilm throughout many sections of the actual movie, which we will also go into at another point in time. New stuff has actually surfaced. But not just that, alright? A lot of fans are also curious whether or not Disney can even really accomplish a goal of making a successful new Star Wars trilogy that will actually cater to true Star Wars fans after what Bob Iger said the other day. Now, on top of all of this, it's explained that both Disney and Lucasfilm are currently focused on the Rise of Skywalker, their live-action TV series on Disney+, and the new Star Wars trilogy that is currently being put together. Now, it's explained that Disney and Lucasfilm are moving along with their new trilogy and focusing on the first film, dubbed as Star Wars X. Currently, Disney and Lucasfilm are in negotiations of getting Keanu Reeves on board for a major role in the upcoming film, and that those discussions are moving forward, and that they are planning to write the script of the first film in early 2020, and that Kathleen Kennedy has found her director and writer for the first film of the new trilogy. Now, it's noted that Disney will be using Lord of the Rings as a template for their new trilogy as far as the format goes, where it will be like Star Wars meets Lord of the Rings in order to create large-scale movies with tons of action like never before, and that these films will be catered to an audience that likes darker tones for Star Wars films. Lucasfilm are currently negotiating of getting either Jon Favreau or Dave Filoni to be involved with one of the films in some way, shape, or form of the new trilogy at some point in time, in order to give something truly special to the fans that will create brand new mythology of the new Star Wars universe, that the art departments also of the film are ready to start various pieces of concept art as well in February of next year in order to give a visual idea of what the new trilogy will look like by Disney. Now, it's said that Kathleen Kennedy is set to demonstrate the new trilogy and their full plans for it over at Star Wars Celebration 2020 in August of next year, where Disney will unveil all of their plans for the films, officially, including other live-action TV series for Disney+, Plus that will also be announced. It's said that the new films will be inspired from Star Wars Legends material, like The Old Republic and Knights of the Old Republic and more. So, let's go over a couple of parts about this. Now, the thing about The Rise of Skywalker is that this movie is really going to determine exactly where the franchise will stand, and whether or not a lot of fans are going to want to see the future of the franchise by Disney. That's pretty much a given, right? So, when we look at The Rise of Skywalker, this really is a very important film by Disney and Lucasfilm, because it will determine exactly where the new films will go. Now, I think the first thing that I think a lot of fans will appreciate or not appreciate, I believe that this is a decision by Disney that may actually be something that not all the fans will agree on, but the fact that they are using Lord of the Rings as a template for their new Star Wars trilogy, it tells us, obviously, that they want to create these movies that are going to feature huge wars, you know, different factions, if you will, that are going to fight against each other. And this, to me, sounds almost like the Old Republic. Now, given that, yes, they are going to be using Star Wars legends, such as the Old Republic, Knights of the Old Republic, and more as inspirational source material, does that necessarily mean that we are going to get the Old Republic how we like it? Or is Disney going to take the Old Republic and change it into their own version? For all we know, the Old Republic may very well be a thing in the future where after the events of Episode 9, a new Republic was formed, and then they actually go ahead thousands and thousands of years into the future where that entire, you know, Republic was actually considered old. It could be something crazy and a little out of place like that, but I think that the most likely scenario is that, yes, we will be going back in time 
for, of course, these new Star Wars movies. Now, even Kathleen Kennedy said a couple of days ago when being asked about this big question about the new trilogy and about the new movies is, you know, they're trying to figure out whether or not they want to go forward or, you know, backward, past The Phantom Menace. And it also falls in line with why they are debating on including Roman numerals in their new trilogy, hence episode 10, 11, 12, you name it. Now, what do I think about all of this? Now, first off, all right, Keanu Reeves, how can you not go wrong with that? I mean, Keanu Reeves is a best fit for Star Wars because, let's face it, he's popping up in everything right now. In fact, Kevin Feige tried to get him on board, I, I believe it was for The Eternals or one of those Marvel films. They tried to get him on board for a Marvel film, but Keanu Reeves denied it and didn't want to do it. Uh, but they hope that one day there will be a role that Keanu will like and will participate in. However, they are actually still in negotiations with Keanu to get him on board for a Star Wars film. Now, the thing about Keanu is that he's a very busy man right now. He's not only working on Matrix 4 and John Wick 4, both of which are going to release on the same exact day in 2021. Pretty crazy, right? Very crazy. Um... But not only that, he's got other projects on the side that he's also going to be working on. Obviously, they got to work around his schedule. It's going to be quite a tough thing to do. So hopefully he makes it to the new Star Wars trilogy. The fact that they are considering him and the fact that he has actually talked with Disney and Lucasfilm is really a big deal. Back to the Lord of the Rings thing by Disney is that I think some fans might have an issue with that because it almost comes off as Disney wanting to take other ideas of other franchises out there and applying it to their Star Wars movies. Kind of like how when you look at the sequel trilogy, there are elements that they actually took from Harry Potter and elements that they took from Game of Thrones. There's no doubt about that. It's right there in the actual movies. And it's also a part of the leaks that we have talked about for The Rise of Skywalker that says so as well. So, the new trilogy, alright, do I have hopes for this new trilogy? Do I believe that Disney will do anything different than how they are treating the sequel trilogy as of right now? If they learn their lesson, if they do learn a lesson, they will treat things differently. But do I think that they're really going to learn a lesson or listen to the hardcore fans out there that have an issue with The Last Jedi and may even have a bigger issue with The Rise of Skywalker? That is a big question open on the table for discussion. Honestly, I would like to say that absolutely no, they would not learn from their mistakes, but anybody can learn from their mistakes. Any business, any person, any group can learn from their mistakes. So the fact that, you know, they are losing money, they lost a lot of money with Solo, uh, it's actually expected that The Rise of Skywalker is not going to make as much as The Last Jedi's box office, which really tells a lot. It tells us a lot. And if you look at the Rise of Skywalker, uh, the actual trailer views on YouTube, it's far less than the final trailer of The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens. You know, the fact that there's not as many views, it tells a lot. So, this new trilogy, like I say, it, it, it really sounds like a very big um, challenge for Disney and Lucasfilm. Even Kathleen expressed this, that... This really is a big challenge of trying to get things right here after David Benioff and D.B. Weiss left. Honestly, guys, I'm glad they left because uh, once they left, it was revealed what they were working on. And the entire, the entire new trilogy by David and D.B. was going to be the origins of the Jedi. I don't know how you could do that without having any action, without having any Sith per se. I mean, maybe there would have been Sith, but maybe not. Um, it sounds like it would have been more of a low-key Star Wars film where there wouldn't be that much action in it. So I think that honestly would have been quite a boring trilogy if I really have to be honest. The Origins of the Jedi as the entire trilogy, I can understand maybe exploring it in a scene or two within the first movie, but the entire trilogy, I think, is a little overboard, just my opinion. I think that focusing on when the Jedi are already established, and when the Sith are already established, and how we have a big war going on, is way more exciting than anything. So that's just my take on things. And that's why I am glad that in the long run, you know, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss left Lucasfilm, and, you know, went on with their own thing with Netflix and other projects. So anyways, guys, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.
nights alone, we hear them moans again. Oh.